G'day, I'm Paul. So if you're after a family wagon, but want a bit of sportiness and don't just want something generic, I think the Skoda Octavia RS has like this little niche in the market. I've been a really big fan of these for a long time. So I've been really excited to drive the latest version of the Octavia RS. Now this is available just in one spec for the wagon, but you can get it as a hatchback as well. It's priced at just under $50,000. That's a little too expensive though. The entire Octavia range kicks off at just over 30 grand. This competes with things like the Peugeot 508 and the Mazda 6. Although keep in mind, they don't really have any super sporty variants that go head to head with something like this. Today we're going to do a detailed review of this car. If you want to skip ahead to other parts of the review, you can use the time codes up on the screen or if you're on YouTube, just scroll down and use the chapters below. And if you haven't done so already, I'd love it if you could subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon as well so you can find out every single time we drive something new. Okay, let's talk design. You've got seven exterior colours to pick from, all but solid grey is an extra $770. And this one here, the red, is an extra $1,100. Now tell me what you think about the design, because I thought the last generation of this kind of looked a little bit goofy with its split headlight design, and I'm really glad they've gone back to this kind of more traditional look. It actually looks really nice and aggressive, and I love the way the red offsets with the black. So you've got that piano black finish down the front there, and then more black down the bottom. It really just makes the front end pop and gives this quite an aggressive look. And I don't know, I think that's what this car is all about. The Octavia RS is kind of like a wolf in sheep's clothing. You've got the Golf GTI engine under the bonnet and they kind of need to give it that aggressive appearance on the outside. And I think they've succeeded with that. It comes with a stack of standard features. So the entire range comes with adaptive cruise control. You've also got here on the top spec model, matrix LED headlights. These work really well at nighttime. So last, last night I did a lot of night driving out in the country and this lit up everything perfectly a little scoop down the side there with the air intake that spits it out to the wheel arch and then we'll come around to the side here You've got yourself a set of 19 inch alloy wheels and red brake calipers on the rs model keep in mind as well that the octavia rs sits 15 mil lower than a standard octavia which is why it has that kind of low slung appearance it doesn't really look like a high riding wagon it looks like it's sitting nice and low to the ground You've got a ground clearance of 129 mil so it's definitely not going to be doing any off-roading and it is nice and sleek and sporty for the corners and stuff that you're going to carve up on weekends. Over here, you've got a black mirror cap indicator built into that wing mirror. The roof is optional, so this is a $1,900 option, and I think that really integrates nicely because it takes up almost the entire length of the roof. You've got these black roof rails, privacy glass, and then if you come around to the rear, we've got LED tail lights here. They've got that signature flick down the bottom. Black badges, this is something that the Audi group's been doing a little bit now, and I think it looks fantastic. So instead of your standard silver badges, they're all black along the back here, and I think it really makes it pop. And the wagon design looks sensitive. It's kind of like a mini RS6. You remember the red one that we tested recently? If you haven't seen that review, click up here to watch that. But yeah, it kind of has that proportion to it. And I think that's what makes this so appealing. And then you've got your two exhaust pipes off to the sides there. So we are inside the Octavia RS and we'll start with the key. So this, I think is a brand new key for Skoda. I haven't seen this before. So this is the front of it. You've got lock, boot, unlock and this has a rubber finish on it you then have these chrome elements off to the side and then the back is piano black with the skoda logo it's a proximity sensing key and then you have a push button start attached to the steering wheel now what about the styling um i, th I think this is the bit that really impresses me with this car this doesn't feel just like a derivative volkswagen brand this feels quite unique and genuine and it feels like it's worth its price tag as well when you're sitting in here this looks and feels premium, and that's what's important. And you can see they've borrowed some of these elements from other high-end brands in the Volkswagen Group. I even love things like this, that sort of Alcantara-style finish along the dashboard with the red stitching. You've got LED lights that run under this faux carbon trim. They're all configurable. It just looks really nice, and I think that's where they've nailed the design. It even goes over here to the seats. Go through those in a bit more detail soon, but yeah, they just look really cool. Now, I thought I'd point this out, a different design feature here with the gear lever. So gone is a traditional sort of gear lever. You have a park button up the top there, and then to select drive, you go all the way down, and then reverse is all the way up, and then you can select neutral from reverse with a half push, and then neutral from drive with a half push, and then you activate sport mode by going all the way down while you're in drive as well. So, interesting setup. Don't know if I love it. Let's talk touch points. So, center console. It's a little bit firm, but it's sort of 
allows your elbow to sink in. And then over on the door, you have soft pads along there so that while you're driving, you can relax. How soft are they? Well, we've got our durometer. We've tested the main surfaces in this cabin. If you want to see how this car compares to other cars we've tested before, there's a link down there in the description. Now, what about build quality? This feels really good. So I always mention when we drive Audis that they're kind of built like tanks. This feels very much like that. Everything's nice and solid and it feels like it's going to stand the test of time. Let's talk infotainment. So this comes with a 10 inch infotainment system. I'll walk you through it, uh, give you some of the basic highlights. So this is the home screen here. It comes with navigation off to the side, radio selection, and then vehicle and telephone controls. It's also a secondary menu off to the side that gives you a couple more bits and pieces that you can configure yourself. The inbuilt satellite navigation is a pretty decent unit fairly quick. It can be a little bit laggy as you sort of zoom in and zoom out for the first time, but it does come with some pretty clever smartphone mirroring tech. You get wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto. I'll show you what that looks like. We'll jump over here to Apple CarPlay first. So it's a full screen integration and that's nice and quick as well. And this is what Android Auto looks like. So also a full screen, but kind of a caveat to that. You've got your map off to the side and then you get the rest of the menu items over here. But once you go to the actual maps menu, it doesn't go full screen for some reason. I really don't understand why they do that, but we've seen that now in a few Android Auto systems, just a little bit frustrating. In terms of audio, you have AM, FM, DAB plus digital radio. And then as part of a $6,500 premium package, you also get a 12 speaker Canton branded sound system. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're about to complain about this in the comments section. There is no knob to control the volume, but Skoda actually has quite a clever solution. So you can switch audio on and off over here using a touch sensitive button, or to turn the volume up and down, you can really quickly do it just by running your finger along this pad here and that will just go up and down. So it's just a really, I guess, clever way of doing it. And I haven't seen this implemented in any other cars before. Now, the screen ahead of the driver. So it takes up this entire cluster. And then what you can do is change the displays. So you can get different themes set up depending on what mood you're in. And what they've done here with the menu structure is they've integrated it within the new steering wheel design. So for example, here on the right, if I want to display something else, I'll push in. I'll be able to rotate the menu to find other items to stick in there. So look, it works okay. It's a little bit fiddly to use while you're on the move, but I guess I can see the logic in how it works. Let's talk safety technology. So some of the key highlights include low and high speed autonomous emergency braking with pedestrian and cyclist detection. You have lane keeping assistant with lane departure warning, a blind spot monitor built into the wing mirror. You also have quite a clever feature here on the door so you can individually lock either side of the car for window and also egress. So that means you press that button there and it will lock the door or that button there, it'll lock that door. So it's just a really good way to be able to control the doors individually without having to do the old school system of getting out, putting a key in and manually operating that lock. There's also radar cruise control. And then in terms of parking technology, we have a reverse view camera, front and rear parking sensors. Let's see what it looks like. So I'm gonna start the car because it needs to be on for that camera to turn up. So pop that into reverse. So there's the camera there. It's actually pretty poor quality. It's quite sort of blurry. It'd be nice if they just used a high quality camera. But you can see the sonar sensors on the top and bottom sides. And it is worth keeping in mind as well as part of that $6,500 package, you also get a park assistant, which is a semi-autonomous parking setup for both perpendicular and parallel parks. Now, I wanted to ask you guys a question. The umbrella that comes in Skoda's, here it is here, tucked into the door. You've got a slot here for one uh, on the driver's side and then one on the passenger side as well. Do you find it useful? Let me know if you own a Skoda, have you used that before? Or is it a bit of a gimmick? So let's talk about practicality and we'll start with your charging points. So everything in this car is USB-C. So it is the latest and greatest technology type. So you have two USB-C ports up the front here. And just like the Ford Ranger, there is a USB-C port up the top and that's for hooking up things like a dash cam. So that's a really clever integration. And it means you don't need to run wiring all the way down the sides of the car. It just hooks up straight there. So love that. You also have wireless phone charging here as well. Now, what about storage? Where are you going to keep keep your phone. So you can stick it down there on the wireless charging pad, or you can pop it here in the cup holders. Speaking of cup holders, how does it fit our coffee? So I had this in here this morning. It's got teeth on the side, which hold it in nicely. And look at that, holds the coffee cup in without it spilling anywhere. 
Same story with the bottle that easily slides into there with the teeth on the side holding it firm. Now, our big bottle. It's not gonna fit into there, but let's try it inside the door here. Yeah, it fits in, but you've got to kind of squeeze it into place. Speaking of which, that door bin is carpeted, which is nice. And then there's also a little bin there for popping your odds and ends. Now, set of console. It's reasonably sized, but not amazing. I'll show you how deep it is here with the bottle. It sort of sticks out up the top there. This top also moves forwards and backwards for a bit of flexibility. You've got a little roller cover for that section as well. You also have a glove box here, reasonably sized. You can easily fit a bottle into there. And finally, you have storage down here just next to the driver's knee. Now, moving on to comfort, you have tri-zone automatic climate control. That is two zones up the front here, one zone in the second row. You have heated seats. You also have the ability to electrically adjust the driver and front passenger seat. There's also seat memory for both and massage for the driver. Now, just keep in mind that given this car has that premium package that adds a lot of these extras, it is worth just double checking when you go to order one of these that it has the features that you want and that you don't need to actually add that package on to get the stuff that we're talking about here. Now, let's talk about the seats just really quickly and just what they look like and what they feel like. I mentioned this before, I think it was in the Kodiak RS review that I just love the way they've gone all out on the seat design. This looks and feels like a seat that belongs in a high-end sports car. And I think here they've done a really good job to make it feel like this is value for money. So you've got those Alcantara inserts, you've got the red stitching, the RS badging there, a hole through here. These were traditionally used to feed seat belts through, so you could have like a racing harness in there. And the seat itself hugs you in really nicely. It's got plenty of adjustability, including this front section that moves inwards and outwards manually. Steering wheel itself sits great in the hand. It's nice and thick. It has these perforations for a little bit of airiness around your hands if you're going on a racetrack or something like that. You've got a flat bottom and then an RS badge there. Steering wheel itself moves inside up and down. And then all of these controls are easy to reach while you're driving. Okay, we're in the second row of the Octavia RS. We'll start with room. Um, knee room is reasonable. Toe room isn't great. My sort of toes feel like they're wedged into their headroom is not too bad. So I quite like with this panoramic glass roof that it sort of pretty much comes all the way back. So you're getting some really great vision outside the car. I think the kids are really going to enjoy that. In terms of other creature comforts you have back here. So you've got two map pockets with what I think is a mobile phone holder. They've got like a, a label there for a mobile phone, but yeah, I don't know, strange place to store it, I guess. Um, you also have two air vents here. You also have the third zone of climate control, seat heating for the two outboard seats. You have two USB-C ports. You also have ISOFIX points on the two outboard seats with three top tether points. You can see that seat design continues back here with the Alcantara red stitching with that nice look. And the two outboard seats are actually quite body hugging as well, which is great. You have this manual blind as part of the premium package. Over here we have a center armrest with two cup holders. We'll give our bottle a try in there. That fits fine. We'll see if our Whopper bottle will actually fit inside the door. It kind of does if you squeeze it in, that's carpeted too. There's also a ski port here, which you can fold down to get access to the back. So plenty of storage space in the back here and some clever little features as well. Okay, let's talk cargo space. So being a wagon, you're going to have a decent amount. So 640 litres is what you get here in the standard configuration. And it also comes with some extra features like your storage off to the side. And I love this as well. You have a little blanket to keep you nice and warm if you're at the drive-in movies or something fun like that. You've got cargo hooks off to the side and a 12 volt outlet. This netting system as well. And then beneath the cargo floor, you've got a space saver spare tire, a jack, and then a little bit of space for storage there as well. Now, how does it fit our bag? So let's pop this in for the moment. Laptop bag and suitcase. So you can see there, there's stacks of room. One thing I did notice though, in comparison to SUVs, your cargo floor loading lip is quite low. So it means that if you are getting heavy things in and out, you're going to have to kind of bend over to grab them. So keep that in mind. You've got this cargo cover here as well. It's a two stage setup. So you can have that in two positions. Then when you want to retract it, you just push that down and it moves out of the way. Now, if you do want more space, pull these levers off to the side and you get access to 1700 litres of cargo space. 
So we've hit the road and it has started absolutely bucketing down. Now, powering the Octavia RS is the same engine as the new Golf GTI. So it's a two litre turbocharged four cylinder petrol engine, it makes 180 kilowatts of power and 370 newton meters of torque. And that's all mated to a seven speed dual clutch transmission. So unlike a lot of dual clutch transmissions out there today, this one is actually really impressive. Gets off the line nice and easily, it doesn't fuss about and I don't know, it's just ready to go. And that is the best compromise with a dual clutch. It still gives you those really fast shifts and the fuel economy, but it's not super fussy at low speeds. The official fuel economy comes in at 6.8 litres per 100 kilometres, and we are currently on, look at that, exactly 6.8 litres per 100 k. So it is exactly where it needs to be. Now let's talk about drive modes. So when you hit the mode button, you're presented with eco, comfort, normal, sport, and individual. So as you move through them, the car becomes a little more aggressive in terms of what it does. Eco is all about saving fuel, so it'll dull the air conditioning, dull the throttle response. As you move into comfort, it removes that sort of limitation on air conditioning and it just gives you that comfortable ride. This car has the optional adaptive damping package, so that means in comfort it gives you the softest ride that it can and that progressively gets harder as you move through the drive modes. One thing I'm not loving though, if I pick up sport mode here and just give this a punch, you hear a lot of this fake induction noise. And the problem is it's even there in normal mode. If you give it a little lean, you still get a lot of that induction noise. And even under light throttle loads, it's still coming into the cabin. And it's kind of just gives you a headache after a while. And I just, you know, it's not a fan of it. I don't know why they need to add that stuff in to make the car sound louder than it actually is. Now, what about zero to 100? So Skoda claims a time of 6.7 seconds. It is pretty wet and miserable today. So we're probably not going to achieve that, but this is what it looks like anyway. Now let's talk about actual engine response. What does it feel like once you get stuck into it? I'll manually select second here. I think I'll give it a squeeze. Look, it's, it's good, but it's not as sort of punchy as I thought it was going to be. So when you get stuck into it, it kind of gives you that light push in the back, but it's really nothing that's going to tear your face off. It doesn't feel as sort of urgent as the previous generations of the Octavia RS. It kind of feels like it's Got a bit of a softer edge. I don't know, it, it feels good. Look, don't get me wrong, it's not like it's not enough. It just doesn't feel as, as hard as I thought it was going to be. Um, all right, we've got some corners coming up. So in sport mode, the adaptive dampers go firmer. And that means that you're getting slightly more sort of response here behind the wheel. It's a progressive ratio steering rack and keeping in mind it is wet, it's actually surprising how much traction it has. So yeah, as I power out of a corner there in the wet, it still has plenty of traction and that's thanks to the electronic diff lock. So it, as I sort of roll into the throttle, it senses that inside wheel starting to lose traction and it will electronically act as a differential lock so that you're getting more traction down to the ground. And it actually works pretty well. It doesn't feel anywhere near as hardcore as something like a lock differential, but it actually feels like it's doing something. If this didn't have one of those electronic diff locks, we would just be spinning that inside wheel and getting nowhere. So these, it, it sits really nice and flat through the corners. Sport mode gives it that confidence. The steering is actually quite direct as well. And the brakes feel really good too. And it just delivers all of that torque nice and smoothly. So yes, it isn't like a surge. It isn't a massive rush of torque that comes through, but it's actually enough to put a smile on your face and it feels engaging behind the wheel. And that takes me on to ride quality. So here on these bumpier sections of road, as you pick up bumps mid corner, it's incredibly settled. It's not super firm. And that means you're not getting that sort of harshness that will send the car across the road as you pick up bumps mid corner. It complies nicely with it all. And then in comfort mode in and around the city, it's incredibly pliant. Here as we punch it through these corners, actually sits pretty good. It has a little bit of inherent body roll, but it's nothing too drastic and it all feels nice and natural. One thing I wish it did have is real noise. We're getting all of that induction into the cabin right now, but if I drop back to second, give it a punch, and then change up a gear. So it cracks and pops on the upshift, nothing on the downshift. It, I mean, it just kind of feels a little bit lifeless. I would have loved to have just a bit more emotion coming out of the exhaust. And I think that's due to all these emissions regulations. There's so much equipment in here now to 
to sort of meet emissions regulations. They've really just killed all the fun factor out of um, the pops and farts that we know these cars for. Let's talk visibility. So clear vision out the front there. The wing mirrors are kind of on the smaller side, but they give you good enough vision down the side of the car. And then you have that blind spot monitor built in as well. Visibility out the rear is not amazing. It's very narrow, that window envelope, and it means that it's a little tricky to see out the back of. And then in terms of parking, those front and rear parking sensors make life very easy. If you do need a tow, it comes with a 1600 kilogram braked towing capacity. Now, what about noise? It is incredibly noisy on these tyres, especially when you hit coarse chip country roads at highway speeds. There is just a lot of noise entering into the cabin. It doesn't make for the most pleasant drive experience. Would have liked to maybe a little bit more padding just to make it a quieter place to be seated while you're out in the country. Alrighty, now normally I'd be doing the outro standing outside the car, but it's raining and I don't want to get wet. So Skoda Octavia RS, what do we think? So I'm kind of in two minds about this. The first generation of this car, I loved it because it had a really hard edge to it. It kind of always fought against you. It was, you know, every time you hit the throttle, it felt like there was just a little bit too much power for the car and it was just always smile inducing. With this, I love what they've done with the interior. The design looks really good and it feels like, I don't know, it feels like a cheaper version of an Audi, but in a, in a good way. But I do feel like they've taken that hard edge off it. It feels quite soft around the, the outer edges and it doesn't have that attitude that it once used to have. I feel like even though it has the new Golf GTI engine, they've really just dialed it back a notch and made it safe rather than sort of fun, if you get what I mean. I don't know. It's, it's a bit hard to describe, but from behind the wheel, I just feel like it could be a little crazier. But anyway, that's just me. Let me know in the comments section below. Have you bought one of these? Does it get better with time? Do you think this is better than previous generations of this car? Does the interior make up for what it doesn't quite have in terms of edginess? Really keen for your feedback. If you did enjoy this video, make sure you like it and share it as well. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon so you can find out every single time we drive something new. But until next time, take it easy.